came out as bisexual last year. And since then, I have been dating women. And what I found very fascinating is that the more I date women, the more I find myself understanding heterosexual men. Let me explain. Exhibit A. I was on a first date with a girl who asked me out, by the way, this is relevant, because when the check came, she never once made a move to pay. Not even like the fake, let me reach for my purse move. And though I don't mind paying on a date, part of me felt like, you know, the offer would have been nice. I was also a little taken aback that she didn't even say thank you. And I never heard from her again. It really made me feel like she just asked me out so she could have a free dinner. And the moment I thought that, I was like, oh my God, I sound like all of my guy friends right now. And my argument against why guys should pay for dates has always been like, Look, girls take hours to get ready. Our investment is looking really nice for you. Makeup, clothes, that costs money too. But we were both girls in this situation. We both took hours to get ready. So I definitely felt slighted. Exhibit B. On another date, I went back. So let's just stop right there. And I, I like her videos. She actually has a new one I'm going to do another reaction to. She did a couple months ago. But this is Anna Akana. Um, so she's pretty funny. But... Um, I would say this, I think a lot of women, what my channel is about in particular, or what I feel called to do, or it just kind of comes out naturally, I don't even think about it, is to help women reflect um, upon themselves and our own behaviors and stop deflecting, pushing things off onto men. My other thing is the way that happens is a lot of times is to see things from the lens of a man, which I'm, this is what exactly what she did. Because when you put those lenses on as a man, you start to have empathy for what men are going through and that helps you to commit to change and to maybe do things different so that you're getting better results with the men or the man that you want, um, the men in your life or the man that you want. So with that said, this is called a foodie date I'm learning, okay? Now back in the day, like I said, I haven't, you know, I wasn't on the dating market for nearly 15 years. Um, and there, I can recall there are guys back in the day where I would be, I mean, I never went on a foodie date because my my parent I always had you know my parents would always have money for me, but a guy would offer to do it. I'm just trying to think. I know it happened. Not I'm not saying for me. Plus, I was into fitness and stuff. I wasn't eat, eating a whole lot of food. <laughs> that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother subject. I didn't do a lot of foodie dates, but I do know um, that that was a, that's been around for forever. Uh, where women would just go out with a guy just for the sake of having food and having something to do and to just whatever. And so many men have experienced this. I would say almost maybe the majority men who are actually dating. I know a lot of men aren't, they're not even doing that anymore. And this is why it's important to understand this from a woman's perspective, because even though the woman asked her out, she was expected to pay, which is very odd because usually in these dynamics, uh, one of the uh, women is uh, maybe a little bit more masculine and one more feminine and things like that, but she seems to be very feminine. So I would think, you know, or they easily split the bill. So that was a weird situation. But I will say this happens to men all the time. And women are just like, well, if he wants me, he's gonna have to wine and dine me. I'm not going on a first date to Starbucks. I'm not going on a first date to a park. I'm not going on a first day to something free. That's ghetto. That's basic. He's dusty. He's broke. When the reality is he's not dusty and broke. He's just not sure he should invest in you because of games like this, where it's clear like he's actually, you're actually just probably there for food or whatever, a concert, whatever it is you're looking to get from that man. And so some of us are going to have to start saying, you know what, I, I, it's easy to just deflect and say, oh, he's dusty and broke. He can't afford to take uh, a, a woman out on a real date. Or no, he just doesn't know you enough. He doesn't know your intentions and your motives and who you are. Are you a woman of character and value? So many of us, a lot of times, get mad when, when it's asked, what do you bring to the table? Now, listen, I will admit, I think we got to find some a new ways to, to talk about that because what do you bring to the table sounds a bit like direct. It's, it's not a, the best way to even find that information out. But I can understand what well, women just in general, it's not just the question, it's the thought behind it. It's the motive behind it where they say, well, why do I have to bring anything other than just me just showing up? You know, it's that Jerry Maguire, uh, you, you complete me. They think that men are looking for this woman to complete them and that they're just so lucky to be out with a woman, period. Because we have these superiority complexes where we really 
um, and God complexes where we think we're God's gift to man a lot of times. And that's because there's a lot of pandering to us. There's in, in media and in, 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 in all types of sources where we're pandered to and we're not told the truth. You know, growing up, I always say my dad, um, uh, my dad, he never princessed me. He never treated me like literally, I, I'm telling you guys, like my nickname was Meatball. And then he would call me Fat Meatball. And then he would call me Fat Meat. Like, and then Meat. Literally, my fa to this day, my father called me like Meat. Like, that's my nickname, y'all. I'm just Meat. Okay, and then he would come up and box me. Or when I was a cheerleader in ninth grade, I refuse to wear my glasses. I still don't wear my glasses to this day. It's just, I think it's ADHD related, but I didn't wear my glasses, but I rolled up my skirt a little short because I was trying to be cute. And my parents had told me before, you need to wear your glasses and that skirt, mm -mm, that, that skirt needs to be where it is. I was a Christian private school. So y'all, the school year ended. My parents had caught me a couple times out the glasses, rolled up skirt, whatever. Not rolled up high, but you know, you rolled it over twice if you wear school uniforms in private school. It was, it was a thing. Um, so I'm getting ready for the next summer and going into 10th grade. Like, I'm about to go to the school. I'm excited. Like, eh, I'm about to go to school. See, my parents tell me like a week or two before, I can't remember, that I'm not going back to that school. And they took me out that school and put me into a smaller pri private Christian school, more strict. And I graduated. There were six people in my graduating class, including me. Okay. So my father didn't play with me. He said, you want to be cute? Okay. Go be cute over there where there's like nobody at this school. There's no one to be cute from. And it was super strict. So I didn't grow up neither of my parents. I mean, it was always said that I, I look at things like, but so I say all this, I'm sorry, guys, I'm going on a, 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 a tangent. I say all this because I think so many women haven't had that father or that person in their life to show that you are not the prize. You are not this princess. Your mind needs to develop. Your character needs to be in line. You need to develop as a human being outside of what you offer in looks and in the bedroom. I mean, that was the bedroom wasn't even a discussion for me growing up. But your looks mean nothing if you don't have these internal qualities, if you don't walk with integrity, if you don't or if you aren't you live with humility, if you aren't humble, if you don't, you know, if you don't have empathy for others, these things were cultivated. But I believe we live in a time now where women don't have to cultivate anything other than, you know, their lashes, their baby hair. Um, uh, their Snapchat filter and who can uh, do the, the busted challenge. The, like this is what's being cultivated or get your degree because you don't need no man. And like, it's, it's so backwards. Inner development is not necessary unless it benefits women worldwide too. And usually it's something about leveling up and, and, and all this other foolishness and that means nothing when these are the things that actually matter if you intend to be married and have a husband or a man house and I ended up making friends with her cat. That's not a pun. I'm talking about her literal actual animal. And she said, wow, my cat never likes anyone. I better go out and buy a wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I felt like I got some serious perspective. I have been guilty of making these kinds of jokes on dates with men. I never really thought anything of it. I was just being silly. But then when I was on the receiving end of it, I suddenly understood the panic. And finally, exhibit C. Okay. Girl invited me back into okay. So let's go into that really quickly. And I think she has one more or two more. I'm not sure. But um, that is a good one. A lot of times we are allowed to kind of slip things like that in. And it makes men uncomfortable, especially... Um, we will have these these jokes and these expectations as though he wants to marry us, but because women are always thinking about, well, not all. Nowadays, I'm learning that's not true, but I'm saying historically women want relationship, cultivating relationship. And so we'll make jokes like that, and it's just supposed to be funny and no big deal, and we should do it. And I don't I think it can be harmless, you know, if you're just joking around, depending on if you're like a jokester, like like I'm a jokester. Like I said, my, my nickname is 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 meaty and meat, so yeah, I, I can take, I'm pretty thick skinned. And so, but I will say this, just like what do we desire in a lot of times when we go on dates or with, for men, women mostly desire relationship. And so we'll make hints or jokes about that. But guess what? A lot of times on these dates, men desire uh, intimacy. And so if he was to make a joke about what he desires, 
would it be acceptable? So that's the only thing I have to say about that because I always want to turn our head, give it something for us to think about and, and, and not just the surface level kind of canned responses we've all been conditioned to think about or, or believe. And her specific words were, do you want to come in and make out? Obviously, I'm like, yeah, you're really pretty. I want to press my face to yours. But then when we got there, we both just sat on the couch and she talked till like 3 a.m. And I was like, yo, girl, I'm going to wake up at like 6 a.m. I was told there would be kisses here. There are no kisses. And like, look, I, I don't want to sound like an asshole. Like, I don't mind talking. I love talking. But she could have said, uh, do you want to come in and just talk? And I would have had totally different expectations for the evening. You know, finally I started falling asleep and I was like, hey, I gotta go. And I gave her one kiss and, and left. And I felt sad that the amount of kisses promised did not equal the amount of kisses delivered. And once again, I felt like a dude who was upset that I did not receive the expected physical kisses. Okay, so I think we get it with this video. She's basically just highlighting over and over the double standards of the things that we as women we are not taught to think about anything but us and ourselves. We there is no voices, there's no shows. I, I I dare say there's the only time I ever see women really admonished if they've done wrong is like these courts, paternity court, Judge Judy, because these are like kind of like judge situations where they have to, you know, um, especially Judge Judy. She don't she don't care what you are. And I think Lauren Lake I think does a good job. My 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 parents are obsessed with paternity court because they just didn't even know it was this bad. <laughs> and so they, they're obsessed. They're in their seventies now and they think it's, it's so great. Um, but I will say this, we, what, um, what women need to start to understand is a lot of the things we do, we're wondering why men don't want to date or they're be their dogs or they're, they're not committing to a woman or they have rotations or they're just kind of, you know, doing whatever. And that's not the majority of men. Let me just say that those are usually the Chad's Tyrone's, you know, the guys who women really want that top 10%, honestly, 5% actually I've heard where they, these guys can be players because they look a certain way. Um, or we've been conditioned to like what they call six, 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 um, six inches, six feet and six figures. And we see the value most in those men. So women, 80% of women are in the dating market are competing for those top 5% of men, um, who meet those qualifications. And the rest of the men are actually just honestly, just are trying to find a good woman for the most part. I talk to men every day. I know you may have anecdotal evidence, uh, to the contrary, your girlfriends have said different things. I'm saying I'm actually in the field talking to men and getting getting a pulse for what's going on. They are saying they don't want to play around. They don't want a bunch of women. They just want that good woman. They they it it is so difficult to find a good woman that meets certain criteria where she's feminine, she's fit, she's friendly, and she 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 offers peace. A lot of men to find that it is almost like impossible right now. And so when they do, they're not running around on her. They're not doing anything because they don't want to lose that situation, that good woman. But a guy who's a player who a lot of women want because he has a lot of options, they were, you know, those guys, yeah, they're doing those things and playing these games. And women are, are, are running into men doing these things. And so what happens is women have dated these Chads, Tyrones, and, and these, these guys and the, those guys treated them a certain way. So then when a good man comes along or the, the, what the women see as a nice guy, they try to use him to supplement in between the rotations of finding that, that, that Chad and Tyrone that they can finally chase and lock down, that they can beat out other women to, to score him. And so the other men are just used for, you know, as whatever they can do, foodie dates, somebody to talk to. Um, someone to take them places, somebody that's the backup and makes them feel good if they are feeling low. Low. It's all these things. And this is why men don't really want to date anymore. This is why they need to, they're vetting you with a coffee date, doing these different things, or they don't want to get married because they're seeing, you know, over and over they're being used or they're not getting what was kind of promised. And if they say anything, they can get canceled or, you know, in trouble. So this is really great seeing more women talk like this and, and see these things. And I'm a bit of a rambling mess, guys. Today's my mom's birthday, so I, <laughs> I got to go do a lot for her. But I just want to highlight it. But if women are wondering why so many men, the dating market has become what it is, it's not just because it's all these men that are just dogs and cheating and running around. The reality is, is that 
there was far more women who think and behave like the women she dated, the women that she went out with, and our behaviors excused, no one's holding us accountable, we think it's cute, it's no big deal, but then you're seeing, you're hurting yourself because now more and more men are wising up and they're saying they just rather not deal with it and they rather just get what they can get and, and, and do them and, and look out for themselves versus trying to find that good woman because they've been scarred by situations like this over and over and now they're in self-protection mode which all of us should be if you've experienced things like this. So if you're wondering what it is and why it's like this, it may be time to reflect and look in the mirror and stop blaming men.